Outside. 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 Do you want to say outside? Yeah. Can you say outside? No. Outside. What would you say if you were on television? And we are talking actually um, during the day with people uh, on the street. Uh, we do street TV interviews. We try to find out what are people interested in, in, in Liverpool, how's the way of life in Liverpool. Um, so for today, I met uh, what I would say a remarkable man, which is uh, uh, Leroy, who's here. And I would like to invite you to sit with me. Uh, I would love to have a little of with Leroy. Hi Leroy. Hey. Thanks for coming. You came from? Toxic. Uh, from Did you come by bus? No, I got a lift. You got a lift? Yeah. You kind of, somebody. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's not like you were hitchhiking. No, no. Yeah. Something like I wouldn't go hitchhiking for the galaxy. Alright, it's another one. Okay, um, we saw each other today in the street uh, near your house. Um, so, uh, um, Ami was telling me that uh, Leroy is quite a known figure in Proxted, so she said you should definitely talk to, to Leroy. Um, you've been living a long time in, in Proxted? Yeah, I'm 51 years of age and I've lived in Liverpool since I was 50. I came from Jamaica and I came here when I was a baby of 12 months old. Yeah, so your parents were Jamaican? My parents were Jamaican. Yeah. Was it difficult for, for you as a, a Jamaican uh, son? Uh, did you feel anything like, like oh, you're not a real uh, uh, Liverpoolian, like they say? No, no, I am an authentic Scouser. As I said, I've been here since I was 12 months old. When I woke up, became aware that I existed. I was in Liverpool. And so, as far as I'm concerned, I've always been a Scouser. I've always been a like, Scouser Jamaican. Person. So, um, when, when you were a child, your parents, they, they spoke English to you? Yeah. They do speak Jamaican, they do speak English in Jamaican, but let's say with a bit of a twang to it. Yeah. So they would call their broken English patois. But yeah, but basically it's English. Yeah, and, and did you have a little bit of that accent when you were a child? Of course. Yeah, and nobody said anything about it in the, here in Liverpool? Like, oh, this is not like... Well, I can explain. When I was at home, home is Jamaica, and when I go out to school, in Liverpool, so when in Rome, it was the Rome, so obviously I learned to speak English from 12 months old, so yeah, I never had any problem yeah. jumping from one culture to the other. Okay, so now you're in, in Toxted, um, how's, how's, because Toxted, um, as I'm not I'm sure if, any, um, if everybody is aware um, how the situation in Toxted is, but there's a lot of, um, how do you call it, um, renewal of the houses? Regeneration. Regeneration, you call it, yeah. Why do you call it? Do they call it regeneration? Because at one time it was dead, and if you know anything about Doctor Who, when he changes, he regenerates, he comes in a new disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you expect Doctor to, to to come in a new disguise? <laughs> well, let's put it this way: I'm here, so the disguise is working. <laughs> um, so during the time, uh, so Toxit, this is like you've been living there for like 30 years or 50 years. All, the whole 50 years. Okay, so uh, did it change for the better, the worse, or do you put it in a different perspective for you? As I explained to you earlier on, uh, one of the reasons why Leroy is a well known person in Liverpool, I said in Toxit, because my arrest in 1981 was the sparking incident that led to the riot. So, I've seen the change from through the 60s, 70s up to the present day. So um, your arrest was, was uh, did you say, the spark? The yeah, the spark, the incident that occurred that generated everybody else's uh, anger at the police activity that led to the riot. So. Okay, and what, what were you arrested for? Uh, basically for being black and in the wrong place at the yeah, wrong time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. But, and that was the truth. But really, there was an incident with a motorbike that the police thought was stolen. The bike was stolen. And when the police were challenged by local people as to why they were handling the rider, which again wasn't me, uh, so roughly, and basically people were told, you know, move away, it's the to do with you. And the longer <coughs> the stall, the more people came until eventually 
I and other people turned up from the local youth club. And we were all a bit irate because we'd seen this kind of behaviour time and time again, but on this one occasion. We knew that we were right because we knew the rider and we knew the bike and we knew that the bike wasn't stolen. So at the worst, the rider should have been given a speeding ticket and told to produce the documents at a local police station of their own choice. But they weren't really given that opportunity. They were dragged off the bike, assaulted, thrown in the van. Police are trying to lift the bike up, put the bike into the back of the van as well. And then, uh, you know, we just had enough, basically. Yeah. And, and so you got arrested and were you in jail while the riots were going on? Yeah, I was uh, on remand in a place called Wisley Remand Centre. So as I always like to say people, I wasn't there at the riots, I had nothing to do with the riots, I wasn't involved, I didn't throw any bricks, I didn't throw any petrol bombs, I didn't attack any policemen. But I saw the results via the TV, newspapers and on the radio at the time. And so basically I was on remand for about six to eight weeks until I was given judging chambers, which is like special bail. But is that on demand? On demand, that means I was held in custody yeah. until I got bail, and I was given judging chambers, which is like special bail where you have to go on appeal for release, let me out. But people have to put down large amounts of cash yeah. or offer up their goods or property to get me released. Do you remember how much that was? I'm not going to be specific, but yeah, people are putting, you know, Mum and dad put the house on the line, things of that yeah. nature. To make sure you can come? Yeah. To make sure I could come home, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then, um, so so the, the toxic rides, and of course it went uh, national and, and TV, etc. Uh, for you, did it change a lot, uh, toxic before and after? I always say to people, for those who don't know, you have to understand Liverpool's special place in the history of the world and in the history of black and white relations. Liverpool was the factory from which the slave ships used to go, go to Africa with their trinkets and glass beads and rusty knives and bottles of gin and exchange them for human beings and then go across the Atlantic to the Caribbean, America, North and South and exchange those people for goods, cotton, molasses, things like that, sugar cane. So Liverpool's place is, we talk about when chickens come home to roost, well, this is the roosting spot. So eventually, it's not so, no surprise when eventually the black community in Liverpool, after being here and being abused for like 300 years, eventually one day says enough is enough. Yeah. Um, I asked this question before, but I, I, uh, I want to, to, to ask it. What if, if uh, you, you've been to Jamaica a couple yes. of times? Um, what would you, uh, if you would be in Jamaica, would uh, um, say uh, to, to, to them about Liverpool? What, something very positive? Well, what I would say, not so much about Liverpool, but about Toxteth, which is in the heart of the city, is that people from all over the world in my community live together in peace. We've got a mosque on one corner, and then there's a synagogue a couple of hundred yards down the street. Yeah. And there's never been any kind of abuse, racial or religious outbursts at either of these venues. There's never been any slogans written on. And that said something to me, again, you were in my street earlier on, you, when you knock, you'll find that one house is China, the next house is East Africa, the door after that is Irish, the door after that is Polish, the door after that is Jamaican. It really is the true United Nations. And I think if we can learn to together in peace, in Toxteth, as a diverse and multicultural community, that is a great example for the whole world at the moment to show different people from different races, cultures, backgrounds and religions can live together peacefully and can work together collectively and positively to enrich our own environment yes. and provide seeds for the future of our community and the world. Yeah. I, I heard you uh, say a couple of times, uh, yes, are you also from Toxted? Yeah, yeah, I am from Falkirk. I speak with a uh, uh, limp uh, yeah. because I had a stroke. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, do you feel like, like Toxted is, because you, yeah. you feel like, yes, yes, is it uh, misrepresented it a lot? Mm, uh, I was there during the riot. Well done, you. Wow. Really uh, 
proud of you for uh, resting. Um, I don't know. Uh, really proud of you for uh, resting. Not what was done, but arresting. Um, I uh, speak from um, Greenham Common. I uh, would live at Greenham Common, Peace Camp. You know where they did? No. Um, Greenham Common uh, in a political base. Um, a nuclear missile going out of them. Well, uh, I was presented there for one and a half years. Really good. Um, uh, I uh, really good. Yeah, I know of the Green Common issue. Yeah. And again, it's that kind of late seventies after Margaret Thatcher was elected yeah. into like the early eighties, where the political masters had a new plan how they were going to socially control yeah. certain things. Yeah. Now you had the miners in yeah. common right in the cities. There was a whole wave of people standing up to what they felt were tyrannical politics yeah. and politicians. Where nowadays, I think everybody's too busy on Facebook and socializing to realize that things are still happening around us. Yeah. But the younger generation don't seem to have the same fire for resistance to wrong, political wrongdoings. Yeah. That we used to have. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah please, please. Um, well, I belong to a to Liverpool Anti Cuts organisation, and we've been trying to get um, people from all over the community to take part in demonstrations against what's going on with the council, and uh, and with wider implications as well. Um, the NHS and like you say young people don't seem to be as bothered now there are a few of them the students in Liverpool have been quite active um, from the universities but there's no real um, big uh, push by you know the if I'm truthful I think a lot of young people are too busy having a good time too busy drinking partying Drugging, doing whatever it is I think to entertain themselves. But it's almost like, yeah, they, they put on the shutters yeah. because they don't want to accept and they don't want to acknowledge mm. what's going on. I say to people all the time, it's like, oh, I was sometimes like some old people are being in a home or whatever and they don't really respond to it. I'm going, well, one mm. day you're going to be one of those old people in yeah. a home. So if you're not interested, yeah. what happens to them now? Don't be surprised when it's your turn. If nobody's interested, then what happens to you? The government are pushing uh, certain groups in society to go against each other. Um, now the popular one seems to be that old people are getting uh, good pensions at the expense of young people's benefits, which is totally untrue. But they're you know, putting it out there as if um, young people should be you know, getting on old people's older people's backs and you know getting rid of the elderly from society um, sometimes you have to remind them that people fought two world wars so that we could have the kind of society today where if you're ill you can go to the doctor and get service at one time we didn't have we didn't have money we didn't go to the doctor no. in the 30s there were still people walking with no shoes and, and clogs do you know what I mean? They're talking about the general strike again. What well, general strike from 1929 maybe was the last time? 26. 26. Yeah. There are certain issues that are happening at the moment where sooner or later people will have to stand up and be counted. As I said, we start talking about cuts for yeah. young people, old people, single families, people from different places. Yeah. It's easy, easy targets for certain politicians to point the finger at. 
I get the did with the Jews, give them a scapegoat, makes them feel less. How's the, how's the feeling uh, among you about, for example, um, Margaret Thatcher, who has been in power for such a long time, oh. rolling your eyes? I hate that woman. With uh, I despise her. Um, she uh, she was supposed to be a beacon for women's rights. You know when she um, when she first started. Um, but she did absolutely nothing. In fact, she put the position of women um, backwards. Yeah. And now um, she's, still, uh, she's still ruling things behind Cameron and Clegg um, because they, they actually worked for her um, back, in the, back in the 80s as researchers. So um, she's still there in the background and uh, all these cuts that are going through. She is the instigator. Um, uh, Sometimes you have to give her a grudge and respect. Yeah. She represented her class. She made it quite clear wow. what she was about. She, she had appealed to the Middle England. No, what it was, she, in the beginning, she appealed to women because, you know, there was a... Um, the women's movement at that time was quite strong, and they thought that you know she would be um, a focus for women's rights, um, and that she could do a lot. And I think that she gained a lot of women's votes on that basis. But she didn't actually help at all. In fact, she hindered uh, a lot of working-class women um, to. Uh, education rights and benefits. Um, I know because she uh, she tried to um, she tried to stop people from going on open university, um, going into open university education. By is that something uh, you for yourself you felt that yeah. you, you experienced that you couldn't do that anymore? Yeah, um, I uh, I only succeeded. Um, in getting my degree because um, my pet, well, my mother wanted me um, to, you know, fulfil my potential. Um, did you study? Uh, I did uh, arts subjects. Mm -hmm. It was general arts degree, yeah. um, which I got an honours degree. Um, and then I went on to get a, a master's degree at Liverpool University. Um, but... Um, I, I think that Margaret Thatcher was, uh, she, she prevented a lot of people, particularly uh, women, and particularly women who might have been single mothers or, you know, that didn't have um, the financial background behind them. Um, okay. um, just one, um, thank you for coming. In the meantime, we had a, a, a guest. Uh, we just met on the street. Uh, I promise you I could get you a coffee or a tea. Do you want any? Uh, a tea would be lovely, thank you. Hmm? A tea, please. A tea? I, I hope it's still here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be typically me that I promise something oh, else. Yeah, I'll I'll have this is a tea? Yeah, yeah, all right. the tea out. This is the milk, so... Oh. Yeah, this tea and milk. Um, Sugar? Yeah, I'll let you oh, take yeah. it. Out. And it's what's your name? Sorry, I... It's uh, Jody Cooper. Jerry Cooper? Jody. Jody? Jody Cooper? Like Leroy Cooper? Milk and oh, okay. Related, who knows? Uh, <laughs> related? Cooper, Leroy Cooper? You have heard of Leroy? How about that? No? I, oh. This is Leroy. <laughs> wow, well, we must be related. Hi there. <laughs> no, possibly, maybe 300 years ago, yeah. your great, 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 yeah. great, great granddad, or my great grandmother. So, yep. maybe that's the link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jody, you 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 were just playing on on the streets here. Yes. Did you uh, need a license to do that? Um, no. Well, the way it works is um, Liverpool One is a separate entity from the council. You've probably heard a lot in the news about um, Liverpool Council trying to change the the regulations with busking, and at the moment it's a full time job for me because I can't get a job as a musician because most venues will not pay musicians for what they do. So I'm forced to, to play on the streets. So I was away in Germany performing over there, and I got back here. 
and all the all hell had broken loose with the regulations. But it sounds like it's not going to be enforced because, well, the police are not going to enforce it. They've got better things to do with their time. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's another one of those cases of they thought it was a good idea, but they didn't really think all the practicalities through. Mm. And a lot of the buskers were against it because it, it, it cut out all immigrants, it cut out everyone under 18, and it's, it was very draconian. Um, yeah. And so there's a big um, legal battle to try and overturn, and it looks like it's going to yeah. succeed. But, but so. the Liverpool one is different than, than the other? Yeah. It's, not, it's not run by Liverpool Council, so they set their own rules and uh, to busk in their premises, as it were. Um, I had to audition, and then you can just book your spots. You had to audition. Mm -hmm. And you auditioned for whom? A group of Liverpool One staff, I think. I don't know. Really? <laughs> I'm <laughs> guessing. <laughs> and they were, uh, uh, what, what, I don't know, did they know about music? Um, they, didn't, they didn't tell me if they did or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. turned up and said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they said, uh, yeah, all right, and mm. they got excited or something like that with the music? Or? I guess so. I mean, yeah. if I'm bad, I can blame them. <laughs> yeah, <It's their> <laughs> No, no, definitely not. I heard you already. Um, um, one more question, mm. the, because you said uh, the Liverpool uh, one, so they, they own that space, yeah. but th this is a street, so do mm. they also own the street then? I don't know how it yes. works. Is that yeah? How it works? yeah? I, I happened to overhear a conversation um, last week um, between someone from L1 and Liverpool Council, and it is true that um, where Liverpool One is situated, Liverpool One actually own the streets in that area, and the other part is owned by the council. You know, dealt with by the council. Um. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. No. Really surprised at that. Really am. Liverpool One. Wow. Originally, yeah. Liverpool One, it was bought by the Duke of Westminster yeah. Yeah. for development. Yeah. Yeah. And the Duke of Westminster was the richest man in Great Britain until Mr. Abramovich come along. So <laughs> when you see the richest man in England and Britain decide he wants a piece of Liverpool, you know that secretly there's something good in Liverpool because they all want a slice of our beautiful pie. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to sing us a, a yes song? I certainly can if you okay. want. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter, and I write about lots of different things, including some of the things you've been discussing with. Yeah. Um, and the song I'd like to perform for you, it's kind of, it's called The Rain, but it's not actually about the rain. It's a metaphor for all the problems that you see around you every day in your own life and other people's lives, and you often choose to ignore it. Okay. I'm going to sit down so I can see the rain. Okay. <laughs> Yes. 
Mother father came to England searching for the streets of gold, found ignorance and prejudice, and now they're growing old. The mother country lured them here with tales called plastic dreams, and her life has passed them by, just like a raging stream. Taken out of tender age and placed in plastic schools, a sterilised environment to churn out factory fools. In turn, they fed the children on the same old plastic dreams, but the first generation child must swim against the stream. Advertisements and magazines and Mr. Logie's cuboid screen will subtly persuade you that you need the plastic dream. Some use H and some use Coke, and others they smoke the smoke, but you need plastic dreams. Inject your head with plastic dreams, it helps you face the day. You sold your soul to plastic dreams, and now you have to pay. The plastic dreams of plastic men, here they come again. The plastic dreams of plastic men, here they come again. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just like that, just like that, just came out of my pen. But uh, I'd just like to say, Joe, yeah, excellent, well done. Yeah. And that, there is the proof in the pudding that, yeah, Liverpool is awash with talented, yeah. creative, positive people. But because of Liverpool's history, because of its Irishness, the establishment outside Liverpool doesn't want to give Liverpool the recognition it deserves. We've just seen that the Hillsborough. Uh, inquiry mm. that a cover up was perpetrated yeah. against Liverpool, its football club, its fans, the city, but now that cover up was being exposed. So, yeah, Liverpool people didn't urinate on people, didn't pickpocket the dead. If anything, yeah. Liverpool people saved people's lives because really Liverpool is in the process of coming full circle from being that place of degradation and human humiliation and at the centre of a human holocaust. It's becoming a gateway of freedom for all different kinds of people, gender-wise, religious-wise, political-wise. And Liverpool eventually will become a gateway to freedom for the 21st century and for time beyond. But it's had to go through this process to become the quality place that it is now. 
Yeah. Is, is it for you also? Uh, you feel the same um, because you're on the streets now and, and play on the streets. That's the way for you to get money. Do you, do you find that hard to, to be in Liverpool like that? Um, I play different places and I find in general that uh, Liverpool is a very friendly place. Um, people are very kind of generous, I would yeah, say. Yeah, exactly generous. Yeah, we have much, much, but we will share. Yeah, and ev everyone seems to love music. And whereas uh, when I go to other places, like I've been to Chester, there's a different kind of vibe in there, a different attitude to mm -hmm. buskers. I guess they either they prefer a different type of busker, like a violinist, or they're just not so much into their music, you know. But yeah, Liverpool's really good to feel that vibe. That way. Yeah. Uh, how long do you play when you're on the street? How many hours? On average, about four. Um, yeah. We play like a couple of hours, have a bit of break, go for lunch, and then we play another couple of hours. Yeah, and, and is that enough to make your money for the day? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't bust as often as I probably should to kind of pay the bills, but um, yeah, if it's a nice day, I'll come out and you know, it's not been too bad as the rain today. So, you know, I'll come out and play for a bit and hopefully make people smile and, uh, and make some money at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Do, does it, do, you, do you feel annoyed when people, for example, uh, stay for a long time and listen and not pay anything? Does that, is it really, doesn't do you No, no. I mean, if they stay for a long time, that means they must be enjoying something. Yeah. So then I, I've done my job. Alright, that's cool. Alright, and the tea. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I much appreciate that. <laughs> is it good? Yes. It's good. Um, let's see. Um, I was, I was, I think I would try to get somebody from outside, inside. Uh, what do you reckon? Let me go and get someone. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, Leroy, 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 uh, go uh, up this Leroy, way. You can, you can, yeah. Peter, Peter, hey. to be involved in a small radio and TV program that's part of the biennial. Just when? Come in right now, just come in and say a few words. I'm just going to ask you <laughs> yeah. what's it like to hey. be in Liverpool. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Hey. Oh, so that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. We've been to Jamaica, by the way. Have you, yeah? Oh, yes. Kingston. Leroy, Leroy. he's been to Jamaica yeah. as well. Very yeah. nice place. All the best people have. And you as well. That was quick. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they won't be more round of those, please. Hi. Hey. 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 My name is well. Peter. Hey. Your Hi. name is? Uh, Susan. Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. 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 Nice Hi. I'm Peter. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming in. Um, this is a talk show we do every day at 5 p.m. And we sometimes ask people from outside to come inside just to have some questions about. Uh, you were walking the streets. Did you go to the shopping area just now? Do you want to take yeah, a seat? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take a seat. And, uh, yeah? Oh, don't worry about it. It's just it's me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. I have one coffee left. Would you like a coffee? No, thank you. Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Where, so, where are you from? I'm from Belgium. Ah, yeah. And, okay. and you? From, from Liverpool. 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 And where? Which area? Walton. Walton, yeah. I heard about Walton just because they have the uh, really big prison. No, that's Walton. No, that's Walton. Oh, that's Walton. Walton. Ah. That's something different. Yeah. Walton and Walton. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Sorry. right>. <laughs> <laughs> Stro strawberry field. Ah, oh, strawberry fields. Yeah. 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 Strawberry I heard fields. about that. Yeah. This this group, right? The the, the Beatles. Ah, oh, yeah, the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles. No, I always make that. No, I should make a joke. Because of course. Um, you're here and um, you you were shopping here right now. Uh, yeah. yes, we yes, were. Yeah. <laughs> These are microphones, so um, so we can record this. So that's okay. That's fine. No problem. Fine. So what will happen is is we just record conversation and then we put it on display <coughs> and then also on the internet. Have okay. you heard of uh, the biennial? The the art biennial here? No, no, we no, haven't. No. No. So every two years there's this art um, biennial they call it, okay. and they invite okay. artists to show. Okay, something. that's good. So this is part of it actually. Well, it's my birthday today. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. I'm
question or two? I think we should. No. I think we should. Okay. I do. Jody, would you would you kind of um, yeah. give yes. us something to, for for to uh, sing? It's your birthday. Oh. <coughs> Are you okay with your time? If you have to leave or anything. Uh, I have five hours to the book at six, and that's why I have to go. Otherwise, I'm going to. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Could you kind of uh, give us something to sing? Uh, what do you sing normally? Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. Shall we go for it? Okay. Yes. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Susan. Happy birthday to you. Wish, a wish for today? Oh gosh. Not to be dragged into the blue coat. Well, that. Very quick. Um, oh. Could I ask you a question? You may. If in a hundred years' time you'd like to leave a message for people in, Li in Liverpool, but in a hundred years' time, what would your message to them be on your birthday? I don't know what, I don't know what my message would be. Yeah. Remember how the government tried to screw us over Hillsborough? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, funnily enough, my Hillsborough was the first mm. thing that yeah. came yeah. to mind. Yeah. Um, oh, goodness. It's the fact to keep oh. it, isn't it? You know, be, you know yeah. the only difference between uh, Peter Sutcliffe and Norman Beeston was that Sutcliffe only killed 12. <laughs> you know. yeah. there you go. I'd say stay as friendly as you are. The people of Liverpool and uh, you know th it's special that though we have Evertonians and Liverpudlians we're still all family yeah that's true yeah. you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. you don't know what time you well, need well, to actually, no, tonight I'm going to a game of Everton because I, uh, I wanted to see a football match and yeah. it was the first one that was on so, so why are you going to see Everton <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> let me see you're from the red shirts yeah. <laughs> No, don't contradict me. No. <laughs> so, no. but I won't take the red shirt. I'll take the blue one. I guess. <laughs> You'll enjoy yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. The, um, it's the only set I know of whereby when we have a derby in Liverpool, Everton versus Liverpool, you go down to the pubs and the Evertonians and the Liverpoolians are in the pub together. They go on the buses. Do you think that, uh, from what I've heard, that when they have um, like a Wembley final and Liverpool and Everton play each other, it's the only time that the police have to have less police officers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Because mm -hmm. everybody travels down together. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no animosity. You get the occasional idiot as you do anywhere, but that's mainly alcohol, isn't it? But, yeah. but overall, uh, the majority, I mean, how many people come to Liverpool to go to university and never ever leave? You know, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's very true. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. You're, you're stuck here now. You're from Belgium. You'll never go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I, I would like to thank um, everybody for coming. Um, as I wanted to also mention, Leroy, your pictures have been in the, published in, yeah, what's in the name again of the magazine? Diverse Magazine. If you want to find it online, you can go to www.diversemag.co.uk. Yeah. And if you want to see any more of my work, if you Google Leroy Cooper, Liverpool artist, and you'll find lots of stuff yeah, there. Yes. Also not long yeah, clean, yeah. Oh, plus, plus, also, also, I've had an exhibition that's been on at Keats Wine Bar yeah. for uh, two years. Yeah. It's mostly yeah. paintings, but it's yeah. paintings and photography. Yeah. So if you're, anyone's in the Lark Lane area yeah. and you go to Keats Wine Bar, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how I started. Yeah. 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 Because we, you know, my wife and myself, we know Keats Wine Bar. We've known it for 30 years, <laughs> uh, right by the Alberts. But uh, yeah. we'll certainly go in because, uh, you know, anything that supports local artists. And as I said, uh, this is 2012. So if I'm not in the 2014 uh, Liverpool Biennial, I'm going to be upset. So whoever's, whoever's out there is listening, got the power. Acknowledge Leroy, and let's get on with it.